Extreme Anime Radio. We're happy and honored now to be joined by one of the cosplayers of our mascot, Sarah Yoshida, whom we've been fortunate enough to work with for the last few years. Please say hello from sunny California, Dearly Cosplay. Hello, Dearly. Welcome. Much for having me again. Thank you so much. We're super excited that you could join us here once again for our updated ballet cosplay safety show. Um, before we go into that topic, though, we haven't seen you in a while. I believe it's been um, about a year since you yeah. joined us uh, on the podcast in audio form. I think you were one of our first audio guests, and then we also did another ballet cosplay um, safety segment. So um, just for the new viewers and new listeners, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself once again and also tell us what you've been doing uh in the time since you've uh, last joined us on the podcast. Yeah, of course. So um, I'm Dearly Cosplay. Um, besides ballet, I, uh, and also, you know, cosplaying Sarah, I do a bunch of other different cosplays and things like that. Um, as far as outside of this pandemic, I mean, not a whole lot's been happening. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a lot of Stardew Valley, a lot of Animal Crossing, <laughs> um, and yeah, kind of pretty much it, and playing with my birds. I mean, what a what a way to spend a year, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I see you've been very busy also with uh, modeling, which is uh, tremendous. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, like a lot of people, I uh, I lost my real job at the beginning of all this, which really sucked but um i did end up getting into modeling quite a bit and that's been really great since it's been a nice way to kind of still be able to get outside and go be social without having to really you know be around a lot of people and of course you know taking all the precautions i possibly can doing this especially given what we're going through right now um, but yeah, it's been super fun and kind of a nice way to just get out of the house so I don't stare at the walls and go crazy. <laughs> I'm so happy for you with the way things are going with uh, everything that's going on around you. Thank you. I am too. It's, it's you know, I mean, like everybody else, it's, it's been a struggle, but I think we're finally coming to the to light at the end of the tunnel, it seems like. Definitely. Um, now, I know that uh, you participated in our Long Ballet Cosplay Safety Podcast that we released on Anchor um, one year ago, uh, last March, pretty much at the onset of the pandemic. It just yeah, to yeah. Uh, but um, if you could, uh, for our new audience, uh, could you tell us a little bit about your dance and your ballet background? Yeah, of course. So I have been dancing since I could walk, pretty much. Um, I've done everything from ballet, I did Irish dancing, I've done tap, I've done jazz, uh, I've kind of gone across the, you know, tr more traditional dance styles as well as Irish dancing being kind of a non-traditional thing, but it was still, uh, has roots in those kind of traditional dance styles as well. Um, but as far as ballet, I've been taking ballet class since literally since I could walk, my mom uh, got me into it because she used to dance with the uh, San Diego Ballet Company oh, back wow. in the day when she was when she was younger. So um, ballet has always been a part of my life. And as far as uh, point and things like that, um, I started my point journey at about 13 and a half uh, years old. And I got my first set of point shoes uh, with permission from my ballet teacher and also provision, permission from my doctor since it is super important to make sure uh, you have the correct strength for being up on point since you're literally going on top of your toes. Um, so you want to make sure you know you have correct ankle strength, correct feet strength um, to, to get up there and support your body weight and things like that. And so it took a lot of time. <laughs> and a lot of tears and a lot of blisters but eventually I got to the point where uh you know you can come off of the bar and be able to you know dance on point and such um I still regularly take class uh even during this pandemic I've been taking classes online uh there's also quite a number of um 
really lovely and wonderful people that have been sharing classes and things like that. Um, so I have been able to keep up my feet just a little bit. They're not as great as they usually are, but you know, given given what we're going through, you know, you got to deal with what you got. <laughs> That's very interesting that you mentioned not only your teacher, but also a doctor. So it was like a, a podiatrist that you uh, saw? Um, I just mostly saw my pediatrician. Um, it was mostly just to check that my growth plates were done, uh, since that's super important to make sure, uh, especially when you're a young dancer, that everything has, you know, come to its end of growing. Um, that way you don't strain something, you don't, uh, injure yourself, you don't injure yourself before you even start getting up on point, um, things like that. I mean, especially even as we get older, I'm, I'm on the older side of ballet now. And even so, you know, it's always important to make sure you check with your doctor, no matter what age you are, if you're going to think about going up on point, um, to make sure that things are good and you know, everything's working correctly and that there's not going to be any type of issue that pops up the minute that you, you get up there and then realize something doesn't feel correct. Um, so always good to just check with your medical professionals. <laughs> Very wonderful piece of advice there as we talk about um, uh, cosplay and integrating um, aspects of ballet into it. Yes. And I yes. understand that uh, you have uh, a few items to show us uh, from your many years of uh, dancing. Yeah, I have a, I have some show and tell. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so let's see what you have. Yeah. So um, currently, I have. So the brand of point shoes, just to start out with, uh, everybody has a different brand. Um, some brands work for girls, uh, the other brands don't, and your brand can change as you age. Um, I always stuck with Block. Block is one of the um, more well-known uh, point shoe companies, uh, dance companies. They make all kinds of different things, everything from point shoes to tap shoes, whatever you name it, they make it. Um, but I've always liked the way that block fits my foot. Um, girls like Gaynor Minden, uh, there's Russian Point, there's Suffolk, there's Capizio, you name it. it. Everybody has a different foot style, foot shape. Block has always been mine. Um, so these are one of my very first point shoes that I still keep. Uh, I mean, I don't have my ones from when I was 13, uh, but... <laughs> These are probably one of my first shoes that I got uh, specifically for cosplay, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, so when I first started doing more of ballet cosplays and things like that, um, I believe that was, oh my goodness, uh, probably, I want to say 2015, okay. I think. Yeah, so I got these specifically for cosplay because they were nice and shiny and brand new and now look at them they are toast <laughs> <laughs> they are absolutely toast um but also just a very quick point shoe anatomy for everybody so the top right the bottom here is the box the box is literally what you stand on um and then we have the wings which are these side pieces. So box, wings, which roll up the sides, which helps support your feet and your toes. We have the vamp that goes up the middle, you know, drawstrings that pull, kind of help pull things tight. You got your ribbons, you got your elastics. Um, you know, girls will do all kinds of things to them. You know, you get your point shoes out of the box. They're brand new, shiny, pretty. And then you just go right on ahead and destroy them before you even put them on. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of my super old shoes. Um, another shoe that I have, again, it's a block shoe. Um, I actually, for a shoot, these got wet. <laughs> I, I noticed there's a big difference in the color there. Oh, yes, they they got wet. So <laughs> there's huge water stains on these. I don't know if you can even see. Um, yeah. But I actually uh, pancaked these. That's the term for it when you color them. Uh, so I made them a little more skin tone just with some foundation oh, and kind of just dabbed it on to kind of help 
disguise some of those stains that I have made on my shoe <laughs> <laughs> and try and extend the life a little bit. Um, but these again are also very, very dead. As you can see, they're just gone. They are completely toast. Uh, and then by comparison, my newest pair, so you can kind of see the difference between a super dead pair, which they're just absolutely, like, the form is kind of done. And a not-so-dead pair, the form is still there, like, everything looks pretty solid still, but uh, it's very, let me see if I turn it sideways, it's very flexible back here, mm -hmm. which is... It's gone. <laughs> Which is not what you want when you want to no. support your feet. Yeah. No, you don't. You want you want it to be a lot stronger running up the back there to make sure, you know, that they're supporting you. Like these are every every single one of them, if I bend them over right now, they're gonna they're all pretty pretty donezo. <laughs> <laughs> and then you also have uh, things that you put inside. Yeah, so I mean your shoe, when it comes, is, you know, pretty pretty solid here. I'll, I don't know if you can hear that. It's, yeah. it's a pretty solid thing. Um, so a lot of girls, if you're, you know, if you're insane and you can handle it and you're an absolute beast, some people don't put things in their shoes. I am not that person. <laughs> so I, uh, I usually put in uh, like a gel insert like this it's called a toe cap and it just goes over my toes kind of to protect everything make sure nothing rubs um and also one of the joys of being a ballerina is that you get bunions sometimes uh -oh. yes so i also put these little guys in um they're like a little insert between my big toe and my second toe and it kind of helps to um make sure when i am dancing that if this was my foot mm -hmm. that my toes don't clang into each other and then make that bone that sticks out on the side of your big toe go out even further oh. um so yeah it's real fun um, <laughs> uh, another thing a lot of people put in their shoes is called lamb's wool and it's it's literally lambs it's literally wool Right. Like little fiber um, that you can kind of stuff down in the front to give you just a little bit more cushion since the box does come. So the box runs all the way up these sides here. And there's uh, it's a mi it's a mixture of like fiberglass, uh, cardboard, um, sometimes wood as well. Um, so it's a pretty solid, very strong, very harsh material mm -hmm. i mean there's a piece of cotton separating you from all of this but you know things rub things move as you're dancing you sweat things move around things get friction uh so lamb's wool kind of helps to negate some of that friction and make sure you've got a nice cushion in there to help with getting blisters i mean of course you still get blisters but it helps make them a little less severe <laughs> right. but you prefer using the gel I do prefer using the gel. Um, I like the gels better because I feel like they stay better on my feet. Again, everybody's different. I've known girls that don't even use the gels and they'll put a piece of like a paper towel just wrapped around their foot and they're good to go. I, that, that is not me. Those, those girls are absolute beasts that can do that. They are, it's not me. <laughs> I like my gels and I like, I like my, my gels and my other little tips and tricks that I can throw in there to make things more comfortable, especially when you're, you know, doing this for a shoot or something like that and you're sustaining poses for a lot longer than you would uh, if you were just dancing. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have a little extra comfort and a little extra cushion. Uh, that way when, you know, your photographer's messing around trying to get the camera settings right and you're standing there like, Okay, can we be done now? It doesn't hurt as bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, for those uh, who want to incorporate ballet into their cosplays, obviously you've demonstrated that it's very important that if you're going to do point work, you have to have the proper training. Uh, yes. What are some of the alternatives for those who want to take this route? 
So there's a bunch of great alternatives. Um, you can get soft shoes. A lot of soft shoes now um, come with the option of like, because we all love that aesthetic of the crisscrossed ribbons and things like that. Um, a lot of just the soft shoes, which are either, you know, a canvas shoe or a um, leather shoe have the option of like that beautiful crisscrossed elastic on the front. Um, and that's a great option. There's also demi point shoes, which are the look and feel of a point shoe, but they don't have the strength of a point shoe, which would allow you to get over the box. They're basically considered almost like a training wheel. Um, so they're, they're like an in-between for younger dancers that are going from uh, a soft shoe two point but they haven't quite mastered where they need to be to get up onto points so soft uh demi points kind of give just a little bit more of a training wheel type of stability um but they work great for cosplay because they again still give you that aesthetic of a beautiful shoe a beautiful point shoe the crossed ribbons all of the lovely aspects that we associate with ballet without having to you know go run the risk of putting on a pair of point shoes for the first time and not knowing what you're doing and then causing yourself serious injury and you you know then possibly you know having to go wind up in the er instead of going to your photo shoot right of course um we're so happy that uh we're able to work with you with the uh various sarayoshita cosplays one of the uh things that we were surprised about at the onset of the pandemic do you remember when you did the uh the sarah shoot indoors with the swiffer yes <laughs> yeah that was great and it so happened that the french division of the people who make swiffers got wind of it and actually shared it on their account yeah <laughs> that was fantastic i remember you like messaging me and being like this is this is a thing and i was like are you are you serious right now <laughs> like are you kidding me <laughs> it was it, it took us by surprise as well apparently they're do they were doing some sort of um theme at the time on their oh. instagram account about uh um using swiffers or whatever in the time of the pandemic i have to look up more about it but that's basically was the gist of it all right well hey thank you France Swiffer for the <laughs> shout out, I guess. That's cool of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to probably send you uh, uh, years worth of supply of Swiffers when the pandemic gets lifted. Who knows? Hey man, I'll I'll take a year of supply of Swiffer. You know, you want to? You guys want to sponsor me? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you've done some wonderful Sarah cosplays. Besides that, uh, your uh, Snow Queen uh, cosplay, which is the first one you did. Um, and another memorable one was where you went out into the desert with the 50s uh, style to uh, one of those uh, abandoned uh, gas stations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's literally about an hour away from, from us out here up in the high desert. Um yeah, that was that was super fun. It was we uh, jumped in the car and just hoped that we could, you know, make it before the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the lighting worked out very well. Yeah, it did. It worked out great. It was it was perfect. It it was a very happy, uh, very happy uh, coincidence that everything worked out the way that it was because we were not sure if we were gonna make it before it got dark. <laughs> yeah. Um... We're running out of time, and I could go on and on about all these uh, topics, but um, if I could ask you one question, besides uh, the Sarah Yoshida ballet cosplays that you've done, um, obviously we're going to be partisan and say that those are among your best cosplays, but um, does another ballet-inspired cosplay come to mind that you enjoyed uh, working on? Oh, gosh. Yeah, honestly, my first ballet cosplays I ever did um, 
I did a fairy godmother one, of course, from Cinderella fame. And then I also did a white rabbit one uh, from Alice in Wonderland. And those were actually my very first two cosplays that I did that were kind of a ballet mashup. So they always have a very special, special place in my heart as my very first ballet mashup cosplays. They're actually in the closet behind me still. They've, <laughs> they've made the journey along the, the way with me. I, I can't bear to part with them just yet. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Well, dearly cosplay, is there anything else, uh, any of the suggestions you'd like to give uh, to our viewers or listeners about ballet cosplay safety? Um, I mean, honestly, if you're thinking about getting into ballet uh, in general or just for cosplay, things like that, um, there's a lot of very amazing resources right now during the pandemic of people offering classes online um, both free and under a paywall uh, there's quite a few uh, members of the American Ballet Theater who do live stream classes every day uh, so even if you're not looking at getting on point uh, for cosplay or things like that but you just want to learn some very basic terminology uh, basic movements basic technique um, I would suggest looking at some of those live streams or looking at YouTube videos. Uh, Catherine Morgan is another fantastic resource on YouTube. Uh, she has all levels of dance classes, you know, from super baby beginner all the way up to advanced. And uh, she's a great resource for if you just need some ideas about technique and movement. Um, that you can incorporate into your cosplay to give it that more authentic feel uh, to your when you're trying to portray these characters and things like that. Dearly Cosplay, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us here on the Ballet Cosplay Safety Show. Of course, it's my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me back. <laughs> thank you so much, and we look forward to your future Sarah cosplays. This yes. is Extreme Anime Radio.